Hi, I'm Mikhail Frank for JFRON SPA here to present to you our SensorMate app. The app's purpose in life is to help you interact with JFRON sensors. You can make measurements, you can record data, and you can share that data with other computers on your network, all from your mobile device. For demonstration purposes today, I've brought with me this QE1008W system, which would typically be used in industry to balance a press on an injection molding machine. Rather than going into an industrial setting to do this experiment for you, I have brought with me these two cantilever beams. I've mounted the sensors on these beams, and I will close these screws to bend the beams and generate a signal that the sensors can measure. This experiment nevertheless corresponds to the four tie bars of an injection molding machine. So these two sensors correspond to tie bar one, to tie bar two, to tie bar three, and to tie bar four. For more information on mounting the sensors in an industrial application, check the video in the description. I've also brought with me today our newest product, the QE Booster, which renders the QE1008W system completely wireless. It collects the signals from the individual sensors and it relays them via Bluetooth to the mobile device. I can turn it on by pressing and holding the power button and it blinks blue, indicating that it's advertising over Bluetooth. Now I can turn on the individual sensors with their power buttons and they show solid green, indicating that they're ready for use. Now let's take a look at the SensorMate app itself. I'm casting the screen here behind me, but everything is running locally here on my mobile device. When I open the app, the first screen that I see is the device list page. I pull down on the menu to refresh and it searches for nearby Bluetooth devices. The search lasts about 10 seconds. In this case, it finds my QE booster. So I'll select that, click connect, and I'm presented with a menu that shows me everything that this device can do. At the same time, the status light on the device itself has gone solid blue, indicating that the connection has been established, and the status lights on the sensors now blink green to indicate that they are communicating actively with the Bluetooth device. The first tool that's presented to us by the QE Booster is the measurement tool. So I'll go ahead and select that. And here I am presented with our measurement interface. You can see that there are some residual values left in the system, which is normal for our strain gauge based sensors like the ones we're using. Um, so I'll make sure that our simulated press is open and I'll click reset in order to zero everything. Now I'm ready to make a measurement. So I can close our simulated press. And here I have some sensible values. Each tie bar signal is the average of the two sensors that are listed beneath it. And the total average is listed on the right. In this case, 96 microstrains plus or minus 46%. Tie bar two and the 46% are highlighted, showing that tie bar two is the worst one and it's the tie bar where I should give my attention as a technician who wants to balance my press. The fact that these two are highlighted shows that this situation is unacceptable, that the 46% is outside of our acceptable tolerance, which can be configured on our settings page. I'll open the main menu, select settings, and here we have a number of useful parameters. First of all, we have the um, operator name, Secondly, the machine name, and these data will be saved when we save a measurement file. I'll show you that in a moment. Then we have a bar diameter. This is used to compute forces like kilonewtons or tons. So we'll insert a reasonable value such as 100 millimeters. Now we have the tolerance, and this 10% tolerance is what was giving us the highlighted values on the measurement page, saying that we were outside of that. So let's choose an unrealistically high value, such as 50%. Of course, in the real world, I would work on my press in order to bring it within tolerance, rather than increasing my tolerance to accept an unbalanced press. But for demonstration purposes, this will work fine to bring our measured values within tolerance. Now let's go back to the measurement page. So I'll open the main menu, select measurement, and here we are back at the measuring interface. You'll notice that we have no more highlighting because 
the measured deviation of 45% is within the 50% we just configured. Um, and we're pretending to be happy with an unbalanced press. So we could also inspect the closing force of the press in kilonewtons, 625 kilonewtons, or US tons, 70.4. And once we're done um, inspecting, we can click Save to write all of these measured data and all of the parameters that we entered on the settings page as a CSV file, which we can open in Excel. In this case, I'll just save it to my Google Drive. I'll accept the file name that it proposes. And just like that, I've written my measurement file to Google. For a more dynamic view of our data acquisition, we can go to the chart page. So again, I'll open the main menu, navigate to chart, and here we have a graph waiting to acquire the data. So I'll click start, and now I can close my simulated press, and we can see that I have a bunch of rising signals. Data is acquired. And now I'll open the press, and we see the signals return to zero. Now I'll stop the acquisition, and I can do some analysis right here in the app. I can pinch to zoom. I can pan around inside my data set, zoom back out can hide and show things. And lastly, if I want to export the data for use in Excel, I can click Save to generate a CSV file as before. In this case, I'll save it to my Google Drive, accepting the suggested file name. And now I have a CSV file on my Google Drive, which I can open in Excel or send to my colleagues. One last thing that I'd like to show you is what happens when you have problems with a sensor. For example, now the sensor 1.1 is showing that its battery is low and that soon it will die. You could also have physical problems with the sensor that would result in the signal being lost. Let's simulate that by simply turning off the sensor 1.2. Once it goes off, we lose contact and we get this Wi-Fi logo with a line through it. And we, with the lost signal, we now have a placeholder, these two dashed lines in gray. Also, we've lost the signal for tie bar one and for the average. These things can't be computed without the missing sensor. So what do we need to do to solve this problem? We need to replace the sensor 1.2 with a new sensor. I happen to have one here. And all I need to do to pair it into the system is double click on the malfunctioning sensor and here I have this map sensor dialog. Click map. And first I notice that the QE booster is now showing me a yellow light indicating that it's waiting to hear from a new sensor. It's listening. I have the map sensor dialog. It tells me choose the new sensor 1.2. That I've done. Press and hold the button. There's only one button on the sensor. I press it and hold it. And then I wait for the lights to blink red and green. So there they go. I release the button. The QE sensor goes back to its normal state. I now have a signal again on sensor 1.2. And all I have to do is hit reset to zero everything. And now I can continue my work. Finally, when you're finished, you can either navigate back to the devices page and disconnect from your QE booster, or you can simply turn it off. And the app will log you out gracefully. I hope this has been informative for you. Once again, my name is Mikhail Frank from JFRON SPA. I'll see you next time.